I had not been back there in years, but it was the last place left to look. Those lost wishes weren't the treasure I was after. It was not exactly as I remembered it, but it wasn't all that different either. Two odd contraptions guarded the lost treasure. I would have to turn one and see what happened. I decided this was no time to take a nap, even though that bed looked very squishy and very comfortable. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Grandpa. I don't remember this part of the story. Beds hanging from stalactites? We'll get there, Gwendolyn. Don't worry. No detail in this story will be overlooked. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. As I treaded through the river of rumbling trundles, I feared I knew the source of that deafening wind. Beneath a slumbering pile of teeth and claws was... Fabled Mirror! Oh, so you remember this part of the story. Well, dragons are my favorite. Do you want to tell this part? Yes. King Edward sent me, the greatest knight in all of Daventry, on a quest to return his stolen mirror. A gigantic, hulking beast of a dragon was the last thing in my way to... In my way to... <laughs> my way to... I tried to turn that crazy contraption, but it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly conundrum. As I was saying, <clears throat> this was no time to take a nap. So, the missing handle was booby-trapped? What did you do? Well, I used my cleverness to outsmart the trap. Then I use my cleverness to hide. Dragon's chains were coiled around a gigantic switch mounted to the cave wall. This cave seemed to be filled with failed adventures. After he briefly basked in the sun, the narcoleptic dragon went back to snoring. I'd probably sleep all day too, if Amira was my only friend.
Wait a minute. The mirror called out to me.
I guess you could say that river swept me off my feet. <laughs> second, I had three choices in front of me. Any would clear my path to safety, and all would have rippling consequences. and my arms could barely grip the rope. But with the last of my strength, I climbed out of the well and headed back to the castle. Ever since the magic mirror returned, its reflections have warned the kingdom of danger, kept our family safe, and it has exposed many troublesome crumbs tangled in my beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Edward was so proud that you returned his lost treasure that he made you king. Everyone knows that part. Now, can we get back to that dragon? Gwendolyn, there is so much more to my stories than dragons. I hope this old cap will be remembered for far more than the action tattered across its brim, sewn into the seams of many hidden adventures. All right, let's get back to the dragon. Tell me everything. Like... Why did you set the dragon free, even though he was trying to eat you? I set him free because, well, over the years, I realized that the dragon was not the despicable, hideous beast Daventry had made him out to be. He was just a caged animal that was never shown any kindness. On that day, I forgave the dragon for his atrocious past. You have such a bizarre way of making friends, Grandpa. I guess I do, too. I'm known as Gwendolyn the Popular back home, but only to my stuffed bunnies. I've always found it best to pursue friends where I can, though they don't always feel the same about me. All right, you two. Grandpa needs to rest. Gwendolyn, it's way past your bedtime. Sleep well, Grandpa. I'll be back first thing in the morning. I don't need rest. I'm as spry as I've ever been, though I wouldn't mind a slice of magic fruit. <laughs> 